he also found out the best way to get into their camp. Then he went back to his own men and led them against the Danes. A great battle was fought, and Alfred's men won. Good. Thank you. Eunice, please continue from where George left off. Class, pay attention. We're waiting, Eunice. I can't. It's time you learned. Page 39, please. Robbie, be quiet. We're waiting, Eunice. Uh, uh, Bob. <laughs> dog. A dog. Uh, I can't. Eunice, you really must try harder. <laughs> Just had your lunch, Dad. Tea then. Fancy a nice cup of tea, Dad. Good dear, I would. Why don't you ever make my favourite steak and kidney pie? All right, Dad. You're a good cook, Eunice. Just like your mum, God rest her soul. I'm a lucky man. Promise me you'll never marry. Not that anyone's likely to want you. Yes, Walter. Last time it was like Nat's feet. Don't put too much milk in. Your mum knew how to make tea. Don't take all day again. Hurry up. And put more sugar in this time. Get it bloody right. Here you are, Dad. Oh, that's too sweet. Bloody big difference between scratching your ass and taking great lumps out of it. Bloody mess. You missed a spot. There. Can't get anything right. Oh! Gotta lie down. My ulcer's acting up again. Thanks to you. You'd be glad to see me in the hospital, wouldn't you? Yeah, listen to this, you. Half a million adults in this country are unable to read. Dyslexia, they call it. I think that's what you got, Eunice. It says here these dice, whatever, see things backwards. Well, you're kind of backwards, aren't you, Eunice? Sometimes it's caused by a head injury. Do you remember back when you were a baby, you used to bang your head against the wall over and over? We couldn't stop you. 
Yeah, there's a special school here where they learn you to read. I hated school. Laziness is all it was. All your teachers said you were right smart. Starts next week. You should go. No, Dad, I... I can't. I tell them you'll come. Here, fetch me a pillow like a good girl. You like going back to school? I won't go. You'll go? Well, there'll be no money for those chocolates of yours. I won't go. I'd rather die. If you can't read, you're no better than the apes in the zoo. You're uncivilised. You're a freak. You'll go. My mind's made up. Here's your pillow, Dad. Oh. <laughs> dear you'll cry later he was ill for so long it was just a matter of time you'll need a job of course i could help in the boarding house we're full up but aunt mary you need a job to survive I i've never had a job before you'd make a good housekeeper yoon i don't want to be a servant well, what sort of employment did a Royal Highness have in mind? Driving a lorry? Well, you don't have a licence, do you? And to pass the test, you'd have to read, wouldn't you? A waitress? You'd have to read the menu. Be sensible, Eunice. I'm only trying to help you, dear. Look, there are agencies that send housekeepers abroad to America. Might take a few months, but it's worth the wait. It's good money. You won't get that here. Look at our housekeeper. She cleans, she does laundry, she irons, she irons our socks. Does she cook? I come home from work and dinner's on the table. Jackie, my life is transformed. It's like having a wife. Oh, it would be fantastic having a housekeeper. So tell George you want one. You want the agency's number? Yes. I'll get it for you. They specialize in Scandinavians and Filipinos, but they've got English ones too. Well, what do you think, George? I don't know. I just hate having a stranger living in our house. She wouldn't be a stranger after she moved in. <laughs> it would be an invasion of privacy. A housekeeper from England wouldn't do that. They're so reserved. I'm sorry we didn't get an English girl. Ours is always chattering on about something in Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> Chichester. Hello? Hello, is Dr. George Coverdale calling? Yes. Yes, uh, the uh, employment agency said you could give me a reference for a, uh, a Eunice Parchman. Eunice Parchman? Yes. Uh, she's been with me 20 years, you know. I'd never let her go, but I'm entering a nursing home. I shall be 87 next week. Oh, happy birthday. Thank you. Mrs. Chichester, I, uh, well, in our family, we, 
sorry to be so awkward about this, but I've never hired a housekeeper before, and I, I'm not really sure what I should ask you. That's quite all right, Dr. Coverdale. Eunice is a perfect housekeeper, but Eunice has already been offered two positions, and I'm not sure uh, if... Uh... Well, if she is willing, I'd love her to work for us. She sounds unbelievably wonderful. Dr. Coverdale, you do sound like the ideal employer for you, miss. Well, thank you, Mrs. Chichester. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Oh. <coughs> Doctor. Andy. I think you've got a job in America. Huh? Now, back to housekeeper lessons. Good. <laughs> Hi, Annie. What the hell's going on? It's not really burnt. It's, it's just, just well, well done. done. Okay, okay, you win. You've got your housekeeper. Kids, dinner'll be ready in ten minutes. Eunice, we're going to be late. Run into the air. What are you doing? Oh, uh, just a few quid to tide me over. But they're paying your way, and that's my food money for the week. You wouldn't like me telling the Social Security about you drawing your mum's pension, would you? How many years has she been dead now? Yes, of course, soon. But that won't be nearly enough. <sighs> oh, I shan't be writing. No point, is there? Welcome to America. I hope you'll be very comfortable here. Thank you, sir. By any chance, was your last employer related to Sir Humphrey Chichester? Uh, oh, um... I, I believe so, sir. Norman Smith, he runs the post office. It's Wank Jones in the window. Norman, can you see if there's any mail for me, please? Sure. Post office is also the general store. You get cigarettes and things like that. Chocolate bars. Thanks, Norman. Hello, Mr. Carverdale. Joan? Oh, uh, this is Eunice Parchman. Staying with us? Uh, pleased to meet you, Eunice. But drop by and visit when you got a minute. Must be the housekeeper. <laughs> that family. Snobs, I say. It's none of your business, Joan. Well, you know the saying, Norman. Those who warn the wicked are saved from blame. Even when the warning goes unheeded.
Hi, honey. Hi. Listen, I think we should make Eunice some tea. We don't have tea. I'll make coffee. This is English. She drinks tea. Well, I'll get some tomorrow. Eunice. Uh, this is Mrs. Coverdale. Hello, madam. I really hope that you'll enjoy your stay with us. Thank you, madam. I'm sure I will. Melinda, come over here and meet Eunice. Hi, I'm Melinda. Uh, how do you do, Miss? This is Tash. Oh. It's French for oh. spot. Down, down, down. Tash, stop it. I didn't know you had a dog. Down, down. Oh, he's harmless, really. The world's worst watchdog. You know, if somebody were to break in, he'd just wag his tail. <laughs> inside. Come on. Hi, William. Hi. Eunice, that's William. He's the handyman, the gardener. He does everything around Hello, here. William. Sir? I know you're used to something much grander, but I really hope you'll be comfortable here. You really should go down and say hello. Yeah, has the Duchess arrived? Yeah, I'll be just a second. I don't mind doing all the meals. I prefer to be in charge of the kitchen. It's wonderful. I hate cooking. I don't mind shopping, though. In fact, I kind of like it. So just make me a list of what you need and I'll get it for you. Or I could buy what I usually buy. Yes, madam. Uh, may I see the rest of the house? Aren't you tired? You've been traveling all day. I'm all right, madam. Well, why not? Dr. Coverdale here. This is the study. Those are his prize orchids. Going Andy's oh, probably nice. just here. burn. I'll show you Listen, what uh, tell him to take a big spoonful of antacid, and uh, if he's not better in half an hour, call again, I'll see him. This is the master bedroom. Melinda's room is over here. And this is Bobby's room. Bobby, I'd like you to meet Eunice. Hello, sir. How do you do? And your room's down here. I know it's not what you're used to. It'll do very nicely, thank you, madam. You have your own television set. We have lots and lots of TV channels, hundreds of them. We just put in a satellite dish. Eunice, I want you to feel that this is your home. I'll leave you to unpack. We only have four channels at home. Thank you, madam. She called me madam. She's very private. Hello, Eunice. Morning. Sir? It's like a lovely day today. Yes, sir. Madam? Thank you. Mm. Fresh squeeze, huh? Is up well, I trust, Eunice? Yes, thank you, sir. Good. Madam? Thank you. Mmm. Smells wonderful, Eunice. 
That's great. Uh, any more bacon? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'll get some straight away. George, you haven't stopped eating since you got here. She's a great cook. Madam, thank you. Things are just perfect. Delicious, Eunice. Thank you, madam. Your pardon? Eunice, those things are priceless and fragile. <laughs> well, you could have fooled me. Will you just put them back on the desk and hands off? Your mother asked me to hoover, and that's what I'm going to do. I don't like creepy crawlies. It took me by surprise. I, I don't like being surprised. Really? Well, Eunice, we, um, we have a lot of spiders around here. I mean, it's, it's a country. Can't get away from it. Excuse me, sir. I haven't had a meal like this in a long time. Mmm, it certainly was good. You uh, eat like this every night? If I ate like this all the time, I'd be a blimp. Not you. <laughs> Why is it Eunice never eats with us? Well, sweetheart, in England, it's not customary for service to eat with their employers. Well, she's not in England. Sure, it would only embarrass her. Dad, we're the only people she knows. She's a stranger here. Well, maybe we should introduce her to our girl. She hasn't made any friends yet. Good idea. Why don't we arrange it? <clears throat> Eunice, everything is excellent. Thank you, madam. Sit down. What are you doing? Just finishing off my masterpiece. Ah. I like it. Yeah. So you still seen that guy? What's his name? What's his name? Sean? No, he's just a friend. Why? Curious.
Bobby. You got the water on? Sorry. I'm boiling in here. Sorry. Can you let me come? Sure. Thanks. Oh, now it's freezing in here. Can you close the door? Wow. I have never seen it so clean. Do you suppose I would like England, Eunice? I don't know, miss. Melinda. Yes, miss. These are great pancakes. Have you seen this note for you? Oh, I don't have my glasses, mister. They broke. Well, here, I'll read it for you. Eunice, for supper tonight, there's lamb in the freezer. If you need to buy anything, Melinda will give you money and her car. I don't drive, miss. You don't? Well, it's two miles to the village and there's no bus that comes out here. Thank you, but I like to walk. It's easy. I'm teaching Bobby to drive when he turns 16. Why don't you come to the car and I'll teach you too. Everything you have to know is in this dumb little booklet that they give you. Thank you, but I couldn't without my glasses. Excuse me, miss. Why don't I make an appointment for you? Hi, Martha. It's Melinda Cumberdale. I'd like to make an appointment for our housekeeper. Okay, what's her name? Eunice Parchment. Her glasses are broken. Sure, that's great. Thanks, bye. There, now you can learn to drive. You're very kind, but really, I like to walk. Eunice, I'm trying to be friendly. We're living in the same house together. I like to keep to myself. Eunice. I'll tell you what. You leave me alone and I'll leave you alone. You and your brother, that is. If you don't stop meddling, I'll tell about you. You were in Bobby's room last night. So? Well, they wouldn't be pleased to hear about that, would they? Bobby's not my brother. My father met his mother six years ago. You're sick. You're really sick. Sorry, I have to lock up or I get invaded by Hurricane Eunice. Speaking of hurricanes, Bobby, she thinks we're sleeping together. Can you believe that? She actually tried to blackmail me downstairs. She says she'll tell our parents if I don't get out of her way and leave her alone. I'm gonna tell them about her. Well, how's that gonna help? I mean, Mom and Dad would just get upset. You're right. I just can't figure out why she would say something like that. I mean, it's ridiculous. Linda, just calm down. Brother. No, I know. It's just, um, I don't know. It's a bit complicated. I don't know. I think these pants have shrunk. Come on, George. From hanging in the closet. Because Eunice is cooking. She's turning us into prime candidates for weight washers. You're right. I'd love it if we went away together. All of us, the whole family. We've never done that. Well, that's true, honey, but you can't go running off on a holiday just like that. Why not? Why can't we go to Mexico? 
Well, uh, there must be a good reason. And the kids would be all right. They wouldn't miss much school if we just went for a week. What about Eunice? You can't just go running off and leaving her. That's what we hired her for, to stay here and look after things. What if something breaks down? I mean, what, what if uh, a pipe bursts or something? When was the last time a pipe burst? And what if it does? We'll leave her a whole list of numbers. And besides, William will be around if she needs him. <sighs> you talked me into it. <laughs> now, Eunice, we'll only be away in Mexico for a week. I'm sure you can handle things. Here's one. <laughs> Got him. Now, remember what I told you, Eunice? Check for snails every day. They eat the leaves. Perhaps the handyman should do this, sir. I trust you, Eunice. Look at this beauty. You know, I grew this one from seed. Seven years to flower. Ah, you know, these plants are like my children. So you'll take good care of them, won't you? Yes, sir. They're all marked. Blue tag, it's water once a week. Uh, yellow tag, don't water at all because the plant's resting. And the red tag, mist only. Now, if you read my instructions exactly, nothing will go wrong. Go wrong? Oh, and uh, they love music. I actually grow better when it's playing. Mozart's their favorite. Puccini, their leaves droop a little bit. I'm sure you'll have no trouble at all. Now let's continue with the alphabet work we've been doing today. First, make a small circle, like that. And then, draw a straight line coming down to meet the circle. Now, what letter do we have? B! That's right, D. D is for dog, or doctor. Eunice, was wondering when you come by. Here you're all alone in that big old house, eh? Yeah. 
Oh, maybe I'll drop by for a visit. Hi, Jonas. Hello. Uh, so, uh, what do you want to buy, dear? Just some chocolate. Chocolate? <laughs> Did you know that chocolate is just as addictive as heroin? In some cases, it causes pimples. I buy what I like. Yeah, well, your case doesn't seem to have effect. It doesn't seem to affect your weight none, either. Oh, the junk they put in things. Sodium propionate monoglyceride citrate. There's nothing animal nor vegetable in it. Personally, I never eat anything I couldn't pronounce. And Norman, on the other hand, he eats junk all day long, eh, Norm? Goodbye. Bye. I'm going to drive Eunice home, Norman. Chalk all the way here, it's freezing. Jenna, I haven't had my lunch yet. Can't you take over for a few minutes? Well, it won't be long. Anyways, hospitality to strangers shows reverence for the name of the Lord. You should read your Bible, Norman. Get in. Don't put yourself out for me. Oh, it's no trouble. I'm going that way, anyhow. Thank you. Here. It's a message of welcome from my church. on the inside, you know. I'd uh, best be getting in now. Sure's a big old barn of a place, eh? Let's cost the earth to heat the winters we have. Hmm? Joan, I was wondering if you could help me with something. It happened this morning. The tenny's all banged up. Well, it's probably just a fuse. I'll look. Glad we met each other, you know, Eunice. I think we're going to be good friends. We can help each other. Yeah. I, you could do me a bit of a favor, you know. See, uh, there's a special service at my church next week, and like everybody's supposed to bring a guest. I think it's embarrassing if you don't bring someone, right? And uh, well, Norman, he, he's not much of a church goer, you know. I'm not very religious. Oh. See? I'll think about it.
sorry. I didn't mean to frighten you. I thought you were a burglar. I was worried. When you didn't answer, I thought something might be wrong. Eunice? Eunice? I chopped you some wood. Saw the smoke coming from the chimney and I figured you'd be running out. Thank you. Actually, that's not really the truth. I just thought it'd be nice to see you. I thought you'd appreciate a little company. When the cat's away, the mice will play. You and I be in the mice. I saw you without any clothes on. You sure are pretty without any clothes on. What else did you see? What do you mean? I think you'd better go. I thought maybe we could have a drink together. A cup of coffee. I mean, it's really cold out there. I'm very busy. What do you want done with the firewood? Just leave it there, by the back door. What happened to your hand? Show me around the rest of the place. All right. Rich people disgust me. They take half the money they spend on this stuff. <laughs> you could feed a starving village in Ethiopia. Please don't do that. How do you stand him, Eunice? Pushing you around like that, acting so superior. That jockey with her jewelry, her nails out to here. Wonder how she wipes her bum. Don't you like them? Wouldn't shit in their toilet. Oh. Hey, I see he's got corns. And she takes the pill. I oh, know. Oops. It's okay, ashes are good for carpets. She left her husband for George, you know. Well, not for me to sit in judgment, but uh, I can read my Bible, can I? Whoever shall marry a divorced woman committeth adultery. And they're not even married, so what's that make them? I don't know. Sinners. Where's that dog of theirs? I don't know. Of course, they couldn't just have an ordinary dog, could they? Had to be a pedigree. <laughs> Eunice, about my church. I'm still thinking about it. become friends with Joan Smith. I should warn you about her. She's not your sort. I mean, she's not a lady like you are. She used to be a prostitute. She was a, a woman of ill repute, if you get my meaning. Before she got religion.
Sweet home. Gosh. Bobby, your sombrero. Let's go inside and warm up. Don't forget to close the trunk, Bobby. Yeah, no Tashy! Oh, there you are. What a mess you are, Tash. Eunice? She must have spent the whole time cleaning. Get out. Off. Eunice? Where is she? Jackie! Oh, George. Your orchids. She's killed them. My God. She's destroyed my plants. George, I'm sorry. That's it. She's fired. Shh, quiet, George. She'll hear you. I don't give a damn what you hear. George, you know how delicate orchids are. Anyone could have killed them. Don't be hard on her, please. You know, I left her complete instructions on how to take care of her. She's acted in a totally irresponsible manner. Now, all she had to do was follow those instructions. Please forgive her. Eunice, that's the optometrist's office. We'll pick you up in about an hour. It's all right, madam. I'll make my own way back. George, you promised me you'd give her another chance. steamed open and re-glued. Look at that. There's a hair sticking out of the glue. I know nothing about it. This is the third time, Norman. Opening somebody else's mail is a criminal offense. I'm warning you. You control that wife of yours, or I'm going to take legal action. Norman, he hasn't even paid his phone bill. Joan, you've got to stop. We can't lose the post office. It's all we've got. Joan, I mean it. Leave that mail alone or I'm leaving. You mean for good, Norman? I'm into the bar. It's my duty, Norman. You know it's my duty. He is a sinner, Norman. He is living in sin with that jockey woman. And till the other day that he marries her, I have to watch them. As a messenger of God, I have to. How do you know they're not married? I have my ways. At least keep your hair out of the damn glue. Abandon your sinful life, George Coverdale, and come to God. You are living in Satan's world, and God will seek vengeance. Woe to the Hands ungodly. We have entered the last days of Satan's system of rulership. Let us boldly declare a day of vengeance on the part of our Lord. Woe to the ungodly. Woe to the ungodly. Hello, this is Eunice Potch. Oh, yes, you have an appointment this afternoon. I can't come for my appointment, dear. I I've just begun a terrible headache. Okay, Miss Parchment, I'll cancel your appointment. Excuse me. See you later, Bobby. I'm off. Eunice, I made a shopping list. Is there anything else we need? No, madam, that's fine. Good. Have a nice day. Come on, honey, I'm going to be late. Come in, George.
Long time no see, Eunice. That'll be two dollars and fifty cents, please. Very expensive chocolates. I've heard something about you. Something nice, I hope. Oh, I don't know about nice. What I heard is that you used to go with men for money. Yeah, I was a sinner. I was scarlet with sin. Seeped in the foul of smire. I was a harlot. And then God called to me, and lo, I heard him. Does Norman know? Oh, everyone knows. See, I laid my soul bare to all who'd hear, so that people would know that even the blackest can be saved. What about you, Eunice? You must have sins you'd like to confess, eh? Me? All of us have something to hide. Some little indiscretion, something trivial. Here's your change, dear. Like, maybe there was a time when you could have been kind, but you weren't. Or uh, maybe you could have helped someone sometime, but you, you didn't. You can make up for all that, see? You can confess your sins. Joan, I, I, I've got to get some things. Here's the list, but I don't have my glasses. Strawberry yogurt, cottage cheese, dog food. What are you looking for? A New England Journal of Medicine. Eunice says it's here somewhere, but I can't find it. She wouldn't lie. Well, I couldn't have just walked away. You're very hard on her. Listen, she's always tidying up. If I could at least read things before she throws them away. It's becoming a real pain in the ass. That's nonsense. Why are you always defending it? I'm not. This used to be a happy home. A messy home. Well, I'd rather be messy than unhappy. If it was messy again, I'd be unhappy. I'll talk to her. It won't help. Fire her, then. I wanted this suit pressed. Didn't you see my note? I'm busy preparing dinner. Dinner can wait. I'm going out soon. Could I do it tomorrow? I want it tonight, Eunice. You'll take care of it, won't you? I must be going deaf. I didn't hear your answer. Yes, sir. But I have heard people say things and they frighten me. But I don't want to dwell on the negative attacks on our human service ministry. Not once has a member of this church been arrested for anything. We don't smoke, we don't drink, we don't use drugs. We are good citizens. Amen. There is someone in this room whose soul is sick. She has a yellow cover on her toaster in her kitchen. <gasps> there is someone else in this room with a terrible sin to confess. Come, my child, unburden your heart to the Lord. Oh, God, I have sinned. I have sinned. I have, 
I have had sexual relations with hundreds of men, hundreds, submitting myself to their filth, to every kind of disgusting desire. I'm not religious myself. I just got my husband back I never used to be religious, but now I'm more interested. I was a hole for every unclean spirit. She does this all the time. Come in and have a cup of tea. I like the colour of your nail varnish. It's fuchsia. <laughs> uh, Eunice, may I see you alone, please? Yes, sir. All right, George. You can say anything in front of me, right, Eunice? No, Joan. Eunice. How you choose your friends is none of my business, but this is my house, and Joan is not welcome here. Your wife told me to think of this as my home too, sir. How dare you tell her not to bring her friends home? How dare you treat her like a, a second-class citizen anyways? What gives you the right to have servants? Order them around like you're some sort of royal. Joan, please. You think you're so hot shit. You think your shit doesn't stink. Vengeance oh. is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. Get out of here. Romans 12, 19. Oh, dear. How dare he try and break up our friendship? Oh, you heard the preacher. We got enemies, persecutors, and George Coverdale is one of them. Who we'll can get away with us? So we'll, we'll see each other wherever, whenever we like, right? Yes, of course, Joan. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23. Everything's ready to serve, so I'll, I'll be leaving soon. Leaving? I've been invited to spend Christmas with some friends. We have 30 people coming. I need you to help serve. You didn't tell me that. You only asked me to cook. Of course. That was thoughtless of me. You're entitled to celebrate Christmas? We'll manage. Next time, you should be clearer. Of course. Honey, what's the matter? Eunice is going to spend Christmas with friends. She's what? What about her guests? Who's going to serve them? It's all right. I told her she could. How do you like your Christmas presents? Oh, very nice. Thank you very much. You can read what they are right in the label. Oh, I've got a present for you. I, I made it myself. Well, let's see. Huh? Oh, it's lovely. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you like it. Here, I've got something else for you, too. Here. It gives you a little color. your boots off, Norman. You're tracking mud all over the floor. Well, it's a rabbit, which you might cook as a stew for Christmas dinner. Uh, Want to know how to burn a fag's ass, Norm? Put pepper on your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke, Norman. I got a sense of humor, you know. Honest, Eunice and me are going to the church supper. 
Why don't you come with us? Norman, why don't you answer me when I speak to you? Huh? Where are you going? Not the bar, I hope. The way you drink, I wouldn't be surprised you end up with a gout. Anyways, I'm not having you drinking on Christmas time. It's not... You've been there already, haven't you? Haven't you? Your breath, Norman, it stinks like a skunk! You dear, oh, you bloody bastard. Supposed to listen to that, am I? You make me sick, the both of you. A couple of old witches. I shall not suffer a witch to live. Exodus 22, 18. Norman! Norman, don't leave me, Norman! I'm gonna get you, Norman! Just don't you fall asleep, Norman! You saved my life, Eunice. With God's help, of course. Where'd you learn to fight like that? I grew up in a tough neighborhood. When I fight, I, I really enjoy it. You come from a violent family. Me mum used to hit me just for little things. When my dad came home, she was dead nice to me. Because he, he didn't like her hitting me. Thought it was his job. What was he like? Dead. They're all dead. Armageddon. You know what that means? It's the end of the world, and it's coming soon. Don't you think God's going to want to save the righteous? Who, who do you think that God's going to want to save on that day of judgment? God's messengers. That's me. And their followers. That's you. He used to be Norman. Now it's you. You and me. We're going to be ready, Eunice. I'm a survivalist, see? Nobody can take it away from us, neither, because, look. Come on, I'll teach you. What happened to your eye? George Coverdale hit me, threw me out of the house. See? Didn't want Eunice here. She's English, associating with the messenger of God. Why don't you come by visit me? Maybe lunch tomorrow? Well, I'm, I'm kind of tied up right now. It's pretty I... late by the time we finish here, are you? Why don't you sleep over my place tonight? I'll drive you over in the morning. No, you. I think we should do something about your hair. Yeah, I'll make an appointment. I won. Come on, let's go. <laughs> well, here's your reward. Happy birthday. Well, you shouldn't have. But I'm glad you did. What is it? It's a keychain. If you lose your keys, you just whistle, and it beeps. I've got one more present. It's the key to my car. You're gonna need it if you're gonna come down and visit me. What do you mean? I decided to go to boarding school next semester. Why? Bobby, you know why. I... I can't stay here. I'm gonna miss you. I don't 
think they saw us. But someone's going to see us sooner or later. I think we should talk to our parents. <sighs> My dad is going to hit the roof. Take a look at Cinderella. Oh my god, look at her. Don't you dare offer a lift home. Me, are you kidding? Step on it. Oh shit, she's seen us. She's seen us pull over. Oh, Melinda. Hop in, Eunice, we'll give you a ride back. Q107,000 dollar Friday begins tomorrow on my show. All you have to do to win is listen to tomorrow morning between 7 and 7.30. And Your hair looks really nice, Eunice. Oh, thank you. Have you seen Bobby's new keychain? It beeps when you whistle. So he won't lose it. Eunice, I thought you said you couldn't read without your glasses. I'm just... looking at the pictures. What, you don't need your glasses for the pictures? Eunice, you can't read, can you? I found you out, Eunice. All those excuses about your eyesight and never having your glasses. Please don't tell your parents. They'll, they'll give me the sack. I'll do anything you ask. Anything? Well, the nicest thing you could do for me, Eunice, is to go and work someplace else. Well, then, you go ahead and tell them. But if you do, I'll tell your parents about you. Oh, well, I'm sure they'd be very interested to know what's been going on behind their backs, you dirty little tart. That's what you are. A dirty interfering little bitch! They already know, Eunice. Melinda, I'd like to talk to you. I always felt that our ability to communicate was one of our greatest strengths. I knew it was going to be hard for you to understand. It's hard for us to understand. We can't help the way that we feel. I was thinking that maybe I should go away to school next semester. Who knows how we're going to feel in time. If that's what you want, then uh, I respect your wishes. I think it's a good idea. But while you're still in this house, all I ask is that you and Bobby give us the same respect. I love you very much. I love you too, Dad. Come in. You know, it's time you and I had a talk. Now, you have lied to us, and you threatened Melinda with blackmail. I don't think I condone her behavior or Bobby's. But your behavior is intolerable, and I want you out of this house. Frankly, Eunice, I should have done this a long time ago. But I, I've got nowhere to go. All right, you can stay for a few days until I find another place to live. I'll give you a month's salary and a letter of reference. But I won't hide the fact that you can't read. Who's going to give me a job then? You should have thought of that before and acted accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> Just for burning the dinner. Yeah. They ought to be shot. After all you've done for them. I bet you there's a job just waiting for you right here in this paper. Yep, here's one here. Housekeeper wanted for family with two school-aged children. Well, I've had enough of kids. Housekeeper wanted for a retired couple. That sounds better. <laughs> Hello. 
Hello? I'm calling about the job you advertised in the newspaper. Yeah, I'd like to make an appointment for an interview. Next Friday. Six o'clock. Eunice Parchment. Uh, right then, I'll see you next Friday. Hey, Eunice. Why don't you stay with me a few days? Till your new job starts. I'll drive back tonight and get you things after church. All right. <laughs> And of course, it's it's New Year's Eve, so we're starting the new year off, right, eh? <laughs> Look at me. I'm as helpless as a kitten in a tree. Darling, you play divinely. Everyone's having a good time, don't you think? <laughs> Catch you later. Yeah. Take those penguins You're right. You're telling your penguin story again. You got a lot to Don't you? <laughs> I'll wait here, okay, while you get your things. You'll freeze to death. You better come inside. I'll see if the coast's clear. Relationship with this gun, know what I mean? <laughs> I'll make some tea. Okay, everybody, are you ready? Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. Eunice, what if George comes in? We'll take it upstairs. <laughs> did that. You fired already, aren't you? That's true. Ha, ha, ha. 
He might get the police onto us. He <laughs> doesn't even know we're here. <laughs> you got any wire cutters, Eunice? What for? You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, we have smitten him in his high places. <laughs> in the bed of his lechery, we have afflicted him. <laughs> what is he, Eunice? What is George Eunice? A sinner. What are we? Messengers of God, right? I am the instrument of the Lord's vengeance. I am the sword in his left hand, spear in his right hand. Larry, great party. Thanks, Larry. Nice, Georgie. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Bye bye. Say hi to the kids. Bye, sweetie. See you Monday. Right. Bye. Good night. Bye. Thanks for coming. Oh, it's cold. Have a little bit more champagne. Hold this. I'm gonna cut the phone wires. Not like they do in the telly. Yeah. They're down in the basement. Mm -hmm. That'll stop them phoning the police, that will. Watch it don't get too warm there, honey. Mm hmm For you, my darling. Thank you. Cheers. Guess we should clean up. Mm -hmm. What we need is another Eunice. <laughs> right. <laughs> I can't believe this. Bobby's actually helping her tidy up. Well, <laughs> what a guy. These glasses. You guys better be getting to sleep soon, huh? Yeah, Dad. May as well be hanged for a sheep as a lamb, eh, Eunice? <laughs> hmm. It'd frighten them out of their wits if I fired this off now, wouldn't it? <laughs> what are you doing here? Let's put the gun down or I'll call the police. Sinners deserve to die. Crazy, both of you. Just put the gun down. <laughs> Why? You never really cared for me, did you? I'll look round the back. Bobby. Oh, it's so They're 
Ford declares the day of vengeance. There, with them. If I did, it's proof. I'll get it. No. World has to know of our triumph. But, Joe, we go to prison. <laughs> so? Then, how could we do God's work? Yeah, you're right. Okay. I'll get Why did she do it? I know she had a temper and a big mouth. I can't, can't believe she'd ever kill anyone. Maybe it's a mistake. Maybe it wasn't her. Maybe it was someone else, a stranger. But when they knocked you out, you only thought it was her. I'm very tired, Norman. Norman. Oh, uh, Eunice, there was a call for you from a Norman Smith. He left his number.
monster in the closet. Yes, it was something so hideous. So gruesome. So frightful. That it could only dwell in one place. Among the slippers and pajamas in the grisly depths of your closet. The entire United States Marine Corps could not stop it. The most sophisticated armored weaponry and firepower could not stop it. Fantastic cinematic special effects could not stop it. The most highly developed nuclear flower pots could not stop it. Henry Gibson, Stella Stevens, Donald Moffat, John Carradine, Howard Duff, Claude Agent, Paul Dooley, Jesse White, Frank Ashmore, Donald Grant, Denise DeBerry could not stop it. It's gripping. It's shocking. It's horrifying. It's incredible. Monster in the closet. It's coming out. Finally, a horror film for the entire family from the producers of Toxic Avenger, rated PG. She was new in town. Oh, hey. She looked so innocent. But looks can kill. You must be fancy. I bet you were expecting someone a bit different. Now, who is it who referred you? 100 for the service, 150 for the tip. No. Now, what kind of girl are you looking for? I don't know what you're trying to call, but whatever it is, honey, it's over. Don't like it when it gets tough, do you? I got trouble with it. Big trouble. David Burney. I don't want to hear you lie to me again. Season Hubley. Welcome. Heather Incorporated. Susanna York, Yafet Koto, oh. and Susan Snyder as Francie, Angel, Hooker, Killer. Go for it. A night with her is full of surprises. <laughs> She's been a murder here. Yes, I said murder. She's dead. <laughs> Pretty Kill. Let sleeping dolls lie.